my boxing career hasn't made me a lot of money. If you're in, you know, two mindset, <laughs> do I do OnlyFans or do I box? Do OnlyFans is way easier. <laughs> I mean, this fight sort of came... Well, I say it came out of nowhere. It kind of got leaked a little bit earlier than than uh, expected. But I think when the when the fight uh, sort of was uh, was announced, it was a bit bit of a shock. Can you just tell me how the fight did did come about? Was it did it come around quickly? Was it sort of in the works for a while? Just sort of talk me through that. Yeah, and literally one week after my fight with AJ Bunker, like I'm literally fat in vegas eating everything and then mams rings me up and my manager jake and they're like yeah we've got this fight it was uh two options um and Paige was like the biggest star and probably the more experienced to be honest and i thought to be honest it's an opportunity you can't say no to so um i took like a day to think about it and i hadn't actually looked at her stuff in my head i just kind of thought oh you know ex ufc fighter but when i looked at her stuff i was like you know what she's beatable uh, so that's why I took that fight. I mean, obviously, before every fight, there's the, the usual nerves. But I guess on this occasion, it's a bit different because you are fighting someone who is an experienced professional fighter. She's been there and done it a lot more times than you. So are the nerves a week out and the nerves throughout the camp any different to what you've experienced before? No, I think, in a sense, the pressure's off. With AJ... I put a lot of pressure on myself. I was like, if I lose to AJ Wonka this time, I don't want to like, um, you know, talk badly on her. Was, you know, she's she, she was good, but um, I, I was like, oh, this isn't for me. Like, if I was going to lose two in a row, I thought, you know what? I'm too proud. I like winning, and if something's not made for me, then it's not meant to be. So I was definitely going to quit if I lost the AJ fight, and I I mean that. Uh, whereas this time, a lot of the pressure's off because. You know, like, like it's a big opportunity that everyone's been like, you should take it. And um, I, I, I believe I will win, but it's a UFC fight at the end of the day. I'm literally, you know, what I do for a living. I wasn't frying hands two years ago, so I can't be too hard on myself throughout the camp. Yeah, exactly. And I was going to ask, did you ever sort of watch her during her UFC career? But I kind of said that earlier, you weren't too familiar with, with her. Is it one of those funny things where, like, you look back what she was doing... I don't know, 10 years ago, five years ago, and then you compare to what you were doing in that period of time? We are two different people. <laughs> I definitely, I think for our teenage years, she would have been in the gym training and I would have been getting drunk and I've like park bench every weekend. Um, to the, to the, you know, I was partying every weekend and I was like 23. So very, very different. Well, 24. But um, yeah, no, I, I'd followed her on Instagram and I was familiar with her name, but not necessarily her fighting, just the fact that, you know, she was a you well a fighter turned OF star. So that's why I originally followed her, not from her fighting background. Yeah, and it's interesting. I spoke to Paige a couple of times over the years, especially when she signed for bare knuckle because she was already making a lot of money outside of fighting, and then to go to bare knuckle, one of the most brutal sports. Uh, so there's always that question of why she did it, and I guess for her, she'd all, she had trained when she was younger, and it's just what she knew. But you're in a similar situation, probably more so. You definitely don't need to do this, and you and you didn't do it beforehand either. So, do you respect that part of her that she is still fighting when she doesn't need to do it? Yeah, I think to be honest, it's part of her brand, isn't it? So, obviously, I respect her as a fighter, but um, for her, to, she's not a content creator, so it goes hand in hand fighting, fighting, and I don't know, getting views. That's what she does. But for me, fighting isn't my bread and butter. Entertainment's my bread and butter. TikTok, YouTube, everything else in between. So we're different in that circumstances. Yeah. And that sort of leads me on to my to my next question is, as I said with, with Paige, she had trained when she was younger. So there's always that thing of she didn't really want to let go. But you were very successful before boxing. You're successful outside the ring. You obviously make a lot of money as well. So what does motivate you to carry on in, in sort of the hardest sport possible, the hardest hobby possible? What sort of gets you up when you don't really need to do this? Nothing but discipline. And I like, like, sometimes don't get me wrong, boxing, you know, I, I do have the thoughts, oh, maybe I'm not made for this. But 
I think that I am born to do this because everything that comes with it, like it's not even just the training, it's the pressure of having the fight week and promoting it. Like it's super stressful. And I don't feel like a lot of people would be able to go through what I'm going through right now. And I think, you know, when you've got the money and you're starting it at 24 years old and you're super successful um, and how easy it is to quit, the fact I never did, I'm super proud of myself. So it's been, you know, shy of two years now and I'm still here. Mm -hmm. So, um, just yeah being proud of myself i guess yeah absolutely and uh you know feel free to tell me to on this one uh but for, for someone like yourself how much can you make from only fans or whatever it is you do away from boxing how much is it that you can actually earn whether it's a month or a year and or if it's depending on a good month oh my god hundreds of thousands <laughs> you know like it's not minimal amount of money like it's yeah it's it's, it's a lot of money it's a lot of you say how much because you're going to be like no way um and my boxing career hasn't made me a lot of money i pay a lot of money in coaches and training um if people don't believe that but obviously i'm not gonna say it online but if they'll be like damn for my first misfits fight i got paid ten thousand dollars which sounds like a lot but once you get your kit pay for my team all the percentages and that kind of thing. I was at a loss for my kingpin fight. They went bust. I literally lost for free. So um, yeah, it and it, it takes a lot of time up of my day that I'm having to go every morning. And the fact that I can't travel or do exciting things and take opportunities. Like this week, I was had a great opportunity that I could have done, but I've had to say no to it because of this fight. So um, it weighs itself up. So I think you know, I, it makes me. I love being known as a fighter now. Like everyone, like, oh, you're Al Brook, you're the fighter. But I don't think boxing necessarily get, gets me any more money. If anything, it makes less because I'm unable to take other opportunities and I'm too tired to create more content. Like OF is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. If you're in, you know, two mindset, like, <laughs> do I do OnlyFans or do I box? Do OnlyFans is way easier. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I mean because you haven't just got your local trainers, you've got Mark Tibbs, one of the best trainers in England. You've obviously, I, I'm pretty sure you relocate as well, which will cost money. So do you ever, d d maybe not now, because you're obviously, you know, you've been doing this for a while and you clearly uh, love it. But at, at the early days, when you are making, as you said, uh, look, hundreds of thousands on OnlyFans or whatnot, did you ever look at your bank account and go, I really don't really need to do this? Or why am I doing this? Why am I sort of put myself through this when there are easier things to do? There are, but I always think that, you know, if something's easy, then it's not really worth having anyway. And like OnlyFans is quite a quick money. Whereas I think at least when I die or when I'm on my, you know, deathbed, at least I can say I, I did this and I tried my hardest at it. Whereas, you know, uh, it gives me something to be really proud of. Not that I'm not proud of OnlyFans, but boxing is earned. Mm -hmm. Like, there's two people in the ring only one of them wins only fans there's a lot more it's a lot easier to be successful on yeah yeah and the fact that you said earlier you know there's loads of chances for you to quit but you, you stuck at it is that may, maybe one of the, the biggest wins out of all of the boxing journey that you you know you're still here and the fights are getting bigger and you're getting better as you go as you go exactly because i normally quick quit anything um i get bored something doesn't work i was never a sporty kid i was in second set in pe like that's how bad it was like i used to like how can you get a second set in pe i was just like fat um and lazy i couldn't think of anything worse than pe um what other things i quit uni um i just never stick at anything so the fact i've actually stuck at this even though two years doesn't sound like a long time it's been like two years every single day it's not a part-time hobby it's like training like a full-time professional so and to see that where i've come today and where i first started i'm actually really proud of myself and i think over the last six five six months my mentality has completely changed as well because the first 18 months of me boxing i was like why i'm so like I was always beating myself up all the time. I'm a massive pessimist anyway, but I was like, what's the point? I'm awful. But you have to be, like, in order to get better. Like, no one starts like a world champion, but I'd always just beat myself up about it because I'm, like, an overachiever and I want to be the best. Uh, but these things take time. Yeah, absolutely. I know, I mean, Jake Paul gets a lot of stick for saying it when he says, oh, you know, boxing changed my life because he was obviously a superstar before. But, I mean, I guess only he will understand why that is. And I put the question to you, do you feel like boxing's um, changed your life? Yeah, 100%. Um, in terms of lifestyle, mentality, mentality, 
like the friendships I have, I am just surrounded with likewise people that all want to do well. Um, you know, I've quit the drinking on the weekends, going out. I'm more focused. I'm at home. Um, and it's made my other work better in some sense because I am always home. Although my content's not as exciting, I can do other things and opportunities. I'm more grounded into a routine that I love. Like the first thing in the morning, I go to the gym and then I do my other work in the afternoon. So, you know, and there's no flexibility to that. Yeah. Yeah, last couple for me. Um, what's the overall goal? Because I guess like it's different in professional boxing where everything's kind of like, you know, you you win your southern area, then you're English. It's very sort of like yeah. there's a clear path. Whereas influencer boxing, you can be fighting a TikTok star one day, an ex UFC fight the other, a professional fight. So f for you, do you have a goal or, or like a, a plan of where you want to be? Yeah, so I'm signed to Misfits for the next, I think it's like 18 months now left. But um, I would love for them to be able to facilitate, facilitate somehow me being able to like fight as a professional boxer through them. Like if all goes well and I'm fighting, you know, ex-UFC stars and these big names, like after that, when you've exhausted that, where do you go? Like I'd love to go down the professional ranks, a bit like Jake Paul, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether it would be Southern area. I think for women, it's a little bit different, but definitely that route. Well, yeah. Well, you, well, you, well, you say that, you look at, you know, Ebony, obviously she only started boxing, I believe at about 25 went on to win a world title in her 30s. Nina Hughes won a world title at 40. So it is different in the women's game. And yeah. I know a bit of people might laugh at the fact that an influ influencer wants to go on to have those world title aspirations. But really, you know, it's not actually that big a um, uh, thing. I mean, the women, there are more opportunities. So do you think, have you spoke to Mark about potentially getting in a position where one day you can actually be fighting Titles, yeah, right? Mark has so much trust in me. <laughs> He's like, you could be world champion one day. Like, he always says stuff like that all the time. So, you know what? And I would love that. And I think, to be honest, having Ebony as like my number one role model when I started boxing always showed me that you could do that. I think, you know, she had like a little bit of um, combat sport experience, but she started when she was 30. Like, I started when I was 24. So, I already had a six year jump ahead of her and look at what she had achieved. So, it's doable. And being around that, you know, especially when you're brand new, makes you realise that, you know, your dreams aren't always so far away. Yeah. And lastly, do you believe you can go on to fight for a world title and even win it? I think I could. I think I have everything that um, you need to become a world champion. I might not be the most technical boxer in the world one day, but I'm strong, I'm powerful, and I'm tough. And that beats the technical boxers um, if you really want it. So I, I think I could.